Man, I have a hard time thinking to myself that that's the direction for a team that's looking to build and build something, that that's the direction they're going to go. It's, you know, you look at their other candidates. There's a, there was a 37-year-old in Adam Gates, a 38-year-old guy in Ben McAdoo. Uh, who's the other candidate that I'm missing? Peterson. Uh, Peterson, 47 years old. Uh, so it's really a younger group, and then you throw in Tom Coughlin going to be 70 years old in this offseason. Uh, and, and, you know, how are you going to build in, with a, a, a 70 to 75-year-old coach? It, it just seems like, I don't know, something just doesn't seem right to me. But, hey, you know, he does have a pedigree. He can command the locker room. You look at what he did this year, He, I, I would argue that there was definitely some problems with this team this year in game management and on the field. In the opener, they tried not to score and he didn't know about it, and then they call timeout before a third down play, and then, you know, the obvious goal was uh, either have a wide-open guy in the end zone or Eli needs to go down and let the clock run, and, they, and you know, they don't tell him that. He, they all admit they didn't tell him that before the play, and then uh, he throws the ball out of bounds. So there was – and that, look, if that on its own was a, war, uh, is a troublesome scenario, but combine it with three or other four – questionable troublesome scenarios and you have to you have to say hey did he actually do a good job this year and the reality is i think the giants organization wanted to move on from him because they did not feel he did a good job this year yeah and i was going to follow up with that so yeah he's older yeah if you want to build something long term but did he just not have a good year i mean if you're philadelphia and you say look we were just so off the rails the last couple of years with chip kelly we would like to get back a discipline and a solid face and then three or five years down the road hand it off to somebody else. Uh, but uh, but you watched every game the last couple of years. Has he just not done a good job the last couple of years? First of all, let me just say that that seems like such a flawed philosophy. I mean, you will want to hire a head coach for the next 10, 15 years. That should be your goal. To hire a guy for three to five years, to me, it seems like a really silly idea. <laughs> uh, you know, you're looking to build. You're really, you're looking to build something big and long term here. This is, you know, that, that should be the goal. I don't know, but that would be me if I was running a franchise, I guess. But your answer to the question is, I will say this: they have Tom Coughlin, Eli Manning, two potential Hall of Famers, right? And the last, it, 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 we're not even talking about just this year. They have now gone three straight years without having a winning record, four straight years without the without making the playoffs. Their last win against a quality team. The quality team meeting, like at the time, a real serious contender was the 2012 season. So, where is the point where they just, you know, are so good and so, and these two guys who, you know, are potential Hall of Famers, they've they've obviously done great things in their careers. I'm not gonna, you definitely can't say they haven't. They're not, you know, mm-hmm. accomplished accomplished individuals. The fact that neither of them have been able to put it together with those two guys in such two important positions and win one game against a quality it's team a in three point. years. Yeah, I mean, you wonder how good a job have they done? Well, and, uh, and that's a fair point. So, do we look? Do we elevate Coughlin more because of those two Super Bowls? And a lot of people, you know, when you talk about the Giants in the Super Bowls, those two particularly, you know, a lot of people smirk and kind of suggest, you know, Tyree and a lot of uh, a lot of luck involved in those Super Bowls. But they still won two Super Bowls. But um, so, when you look at Coughlin and people go, "Well, he won the Super Bowl twice," are we are we saying that? Well. Eh, the whole body of work might not be quite as shiny as those two, two Super Bowls suggest? I mean, you tell me. You're, you're, I mean, I'm not saying that, no. That, as a whole, it is. But when you're looking at the current, the future, then I say maybe it is misguided because you're, you're kind of blinded by the rings because the recent history just doesn't show this guy, you know, being one of the best head coaches in the NFL. Mm-hmm. The, the, you know, the past shows that. There, you know, the, that. 15-year stretch when he was in Jacksonville and the Giants, that certainly shows that, but there's, to me, there's just nothing there over the last three years that says Tom Coughlin is one of the best head coaches in the NFL, or a guy that has his team on total lockdown and is getting the, you know, is getting his team to overperform, outperform maybe what the expectations are or what the talent level is. I mean, they went, what, 6-10 and 10 this year? And when you have e- how much worse can you be with Eli Manning and Odell Beckham on your team? I know their defense was horrendous, but I mean it's not like they overshot their expectations or what they should have been with those guys. You know, with what they had on their roster. Yeah. I mean, those guys are good enough to win you games. I mean, you saw it. 
they're that good. You know, they, they, Eli Manning threw 35 touchdown passes. And Odell Beckham did a lot of damage. Now, if they, if they handled end game situations better, you can easily say they should have had two more wins. Easy. I mean, uh, and that's, uh, trust me, that's how the front office felt. They felt that the, the coaching cost them two or three games this year. Wow. So, um, least, how, what least. do they view Jerry Reese then? Because he has not done a good job uh, giving them talent. I mean, this team, as you mentioned, devoid a lot of talent on the defensive side of the ball specifically. Yeah. I mean, I think they know that Jerry Reese hasn't done a very good job. Uh, the talent level was the primary problem this season. Or I shouldn't even say primary. It was There was a lot of problems. And you put them all together, and that's how you get a 6-10 and 10 team. Uh, so... Yes, Jerry Reese's talent evaluation was part of that problem, but the reality of the situation is, and I know people think that you know it's ageist or you know you're you're discriminating against age, but when you're 50 or whatever Jerry Reese is, first of all, he's been with the organization for 20 plus years. They never fire anyone in the front office, uh, so when you've been in that situation, he has two Super Bowls in nine years as the coach. I mean, as the general manager, he's going to get the opportunity, even though he's made massive mistakes to rebuild whereas Tom Coughlin is in a different spot he's there 12 years it's a different because his voice is the you know he's he sets the tone for the team he's a he's a guy that needs to stand there in the locker room uh so he's 69 going on 70 years old do you want to rebuild and give him okay we need to rebuild and redo this whole thing are we really going to start a new cycle and say okay Tom Coughlin you're the guy we're going to put in charge because I'm not sure you could say okay this is we're going to go in a five-year plan, and this is this is our guy. Let's let's start let's start over here. He deserved that. Now, if Tom Coughlin was fifty-five years old, he might get that opportunity. I mean, that's the reality of the situation. No doubt. Uh, Jordan Ron on NJ.com covers the Giants. Um, ben McAdoo was I'll, here. I'll say this. I'll say this. I, I don't I don't know for a fact that he can't coach another three to five years, but what we've seen in the NFL, no one's coached past the age of, into the age of seventy-three. So well, this, this is very um, like uh, so Joe Gibbs. To him, yeah. So if you're committing to him, you're saying, okay, we think he's basically the outlier to everything we've seen in our entire life. Yeah. Well, Which you is know, a big gamble. Yeah, That's a big risk. Joe Gibbs. You know, uh, won a couple Super Bowls with the with the Redskins. They brought him back the second time, and you know he couldn't he couldn't get out of his own way. That was a disaster the second time he came back here. So some of these guys, and yeah, Joe the Gibbs, game Joe changes. Was 72, 70, 72, I think well, he coached his last game. I think at seventy two years old. Hmm. Um, ben McAdoo was here, Jordan. Um, number one, how realistic is it that he's the next giant coach? And number two, would he be a guy that if Philly got, you would say they got a, a great hire? Yeah, I mean, it's hard to say great because you don't know. There's a lot of unknown with him. He's 38 years old. He's a pretty young guy. Uh, but I do – I like Ben McAdoo, and I like what I see. I, I look at him, and he has a commanding presence. You you watch Ben McAdoo. Look, he's next to Eli Manning. They're almost contemporaries. He's 38 years old. Eli's 35. So they're really, you know, there's like a three plus year difference between those two guys. But you see Ben McAdoo stand up there, and you see the way he he handles his players. You see the way he carries himself. I mean, I talked to 10 or 15 guys, and every single one of them thought that he could, he was a future head coach in this league. Not one of them said they didn't think he could handle it right now. He can go in front of any room and handle and command that room. And I think that's really what you're looking for the most out of a head coach is they have to be able to command that room. And uh, he has an ability not just in the fact that he's he's like Coughlin in a lot of ways. I like to say he's like a 30-year, he's younger, but he has that same attitude or, you know, mentality, you know, Western PA, blue-collar kind of guy. I mean, he, he's very militaristic, almost like Coughlin. But at the same time, he's, he's able to relate to players very well. And, he, you know, the – a lot of people compare him to Andy Reid because there's a lot of similarities. That's kind of how he's being sold as a young Andy Reid. Hmm. He was the tight ends coach in Green Bay, a quarterback coach in Green Bay. He mentored Aaron Rodgers. Andy mentored uh, uh, Brett Favre. So there's a lot of comparisons there. He's, like, he's even younger. And the benefit he has compared to Andy when he was hired back with the Eagles is that at least McAdoo did get to go off for two years on his own, call plays, and kind of do that. And you saw it was a learning experience, but he handled it pretty well. 35 touchdowns for Eli Manning. This is a guy who, you know, threw 27, 15 touchdowns and 20 inter- 27 interceptions the season before Ben McAdoo arrived. All right, uh, Jordan Ronan, let me ask you this, because Coughlin, Coughlin's going to interview with now not only Philadelphia, but uh, he's got an interview set up with the San Francisco 49ers as well. Um, we yeah, know yeah, it, it seems that he, does not, he did not want to um, – 
he did not want to stop coaching. So his resigning is obviously they just didn't want him back, and they tried to do it nice. But uh, will he coach again? Will somebody hire Tom Coughlin next year? Will he be back on a sideline? Well, I guess he has more of a shot now. There's more than one team. I mean, I would have been really surprised if the Eagles did it for sure. Uh, the 49ers, I, I know less about the 49ers. I do know that their ownership is uh, a little out there, so I guess it gives him a, be- a better chance. Uh, he's not the most respected owner in the league, uh, Jed York. Uh, you know, there's a, there's a lot of people who will say negative things about Jed York. Uh, so I guess there's an opportunity. I would have said, if you asked me yesterday, I would have said no. I would have bet very hard against it. Now I would still bet a hard. I would still bet against it, but not quite as hard. Uh, I just think. You know, even in in San Francisco, you you would just scratch your head. That's a re that's a big rebuilding project they got there. I mean, well, it's funny. You almost know. sound it's perplexed hard. that people are interested in Coughlin at this stage. Not saying in a bad way, just like, look, I get it. He's won some Super Bowls. He did a great job, but he's almost seventy. You know, it, it's it, his time has passed. Like, you know what I mean? Well, if you told me, Mike, if you told me. The Detroit Lions fired their coach and Tom Coughlin. And then I'd say, you know what, that makes more sense. They got the pieces there. They were a playoff team last year. They were out about their best player, DeAndre, defensive player, DeAndre Levy, Levy this year. Like, they're close, you know. That makes more sense to me. A team that's basically in a rebuild doesn't make sense to me when you're talking about Tom Coughlin. I wonder yeah, where, I, and I wonder where Philadelphia thinks they are. Do they think they're close but needed better leadership, or do they think they're far and need to build with someone long term? Do you think they're close, though? I mean, I look at them, and I well, first of all, we don't know where their quarterback is going to be. I look at okay, where's the building block pieces on the Eagles? Well, and, and I think that's that I think that's a big question for them: is was this a seven-win team that was a disaster, or is this a seven-win team that had a lack of accountability and a lack of discipline? Well, you know, I this is a seven-win like, team that know, realistically Jordan could have been a ten-win team if they could have got out of their own way at the time. You say this, but I know a personnel guy who said to said at the beginning of the season that looking at that roster, the fact that if they even go 500 or better, it's just just a great cut. That he thought their roster was flawed and not very good in the first place, and he turned out to be dead right when you look at it in the past. So is Chip a good coach? So, then did they get did they fire a good coach? I, I don't think. I mean, does any does how many people really think he was a bad coach? I think he made a lot of mistakes, yeah. and a lot of them were personality driven. But I don't think there's that many people out there that think he's a terrible coach. So if you bring in a personality coach, guy, if you bring in a personality like Coughlin, can he get a seven-win team in Philly and make it a ten-win team? Maybe, but is that your goal? Your goal should be to win a Super Bowl and build up to win a Super Bowl. Oh, no doubt I mean, about it. Well, Coughlin needs that, nine that wins to like win a, a make, Super Bowl. <laughs> seems like a makeshift. Yeah, that's true. That's true. But it seems like a make. It seems like a makeshift answer. You know, I mean, a makeshift solution. It's very interesting. Yeah, yeah. They it, really it, got to build up, in my in my estimation. You look at the team, and you say, okay, we got to kind of have to sort of not completely scrap it. Yeah, we're not trying to. We're not close enough. We're just trying to put it together. We're close to the Super Bowl winner. And I, I don't. Do you, do you think they're that? Close? No, no, I, I, absolutely not. But in the NFL, I don't think you're ever as far as people think you are. I agree with that. Andy Reid just had a thing. You're never as bad as you look, and you're never as good as you look Correct. either. No matter, no matter what the scoreboard says. And there's a lot of truth to that. But at the same time, is when you're talking about, you know, system building, and uh, you're looking, you're looking long term. I'm, I'm okay, our goal is to win the Super Bowl. That should be every team's goal, right? We're looking to build a, a, a something into a Super Bowl winner. And this is a process. First of all, you don't just you look at the teams that win Super Bowls, they don't just make the playoffs one year usually and win the Super Bowl. They're usually teams that have made the playoffs before that have kind of gone through their grind. It's a steady usually rise to get to that point where you're a Super Bowl winner. I mean, look at the Ravens. You look at the, you know, the, the 49ers even before. They, I know they didn't win the Super Bowl, but they built themselves up. The Seahawks, it's a steady climb of building. It's a team-building thing. And, you, you know, to slap it together, to me, would seem to be the wrong thing philosophy when you're talking about looking to build a team and moving forward. All right, uh, our buddy Jordan Ron on NJ.com. He covers the Giants. Uh, always fun. And if Tom Coughlin was in Philly, that would make those games even more fun than they already are. Thanks, pal. Yeah, I'm all for it. Let's see it.